Hi guys, welcome back to 4 Wheel Drivers Life. As some of you may already know that I sold my Lear top, um, Lear fiberglass top about two months ago. And to save me some weight and still having the mounting or even more mounting capabilities, I went with the soft topper and the extrusion overland rack route. Um, two months later, I finally received the parts and uh, I'm about to show you how I unpacked it, installed it um, um, with my soft topper. So uh, it's going to be a long video. So if you have time, um, stay tuned or keep watching. If you don't, I'm going to label each section so that you can skip around and uh, get to the section that you needed. Since the temperature dropped a lot in the area that I live in when I filmed this installation, um, there may be some sections that I skipped, but I'm just trying to cover everything uh, as detailed as I can um, so that you will have a good idea of how to install the rack over the soft topper. Now you're seeing me unpacking the package. There are two main packages. One is the bars that you see here, uh, the extruded aluminum bars, and the other is the hardwares, including the molly plates, etc. I somehow lost the footage in the for the uh, Molly or for the for the hardware package, but it's just a, a smaller box containing everything that you would need to assemble this, other than the bars. So here I'm just trying to lay everything out uh, in front of me to check on each parts. Um, as you see, there's some um, you know like part of the bars that's kind of has a little bit of imperfection um, on them. But it's okay because uh, well, that was in terms of the powder coating. Uh, it's not going to create any uh, additional rust because aluminum can't rust. Uh, it's just purely um, cosmetic. Um, and please pay attention to the holes at the end of the bar because some of them are tapped and some of them are not. And they are tapped or not for a reason. Um, when you assemble it, please um, check the... Uh, instruction manual first so that you will have an idea where the threaded um, ends would face uh, in terms of uh, the final structure. Here you can see I'm assembling the um, side brace to the main vertical column. Um, it needs a square plate has, uh, which has four holes on it and you use that to, to join the um, side brace to the columns like that shown in the instruction manual which I've already attached a screenshot here. For the entire rack assembly please be uh, careful when you use the hardwares. As shown here for any structural parts you need to use the high torque T-nuts and not the drop-in T-nuts shown in the picture above. So by default, the uh, rack come with one side brace. However, I opted for two on each side, which uh, in my opinion will provide a little more structural rigidity um, and I have more points for attachments. See, I have one of the brackets uh, at the foot installed here um, before everything else. I just wanted to get a feel of it because um, you in my opinion, it's better off for you to leave that until the very last when you finish the entire rack assemble and then putting the brackets on will be a little easier in my opinion. Like I mentioned earlier, please be careful of where you facing the threaded end of the vertical columns um, because um, it, it matters and that's where it goes to uh, bolt into the XTR brackets. Now we're building the top portion of the rack. As you see here, we're using the corner brackets uh, to connect the support or to connect the top support braces into the uh, main support bars, uh, which is the shorter one in the middle.
Alright, now is the final assembly of the rack. I put the top portion on top of a box where it's just a slightly taller, um, like maybe half an inch taller than the vertical section uh, standing up so that I can have some free space underneath uh, for adjustments. And now I'm putting the bolts into the corner or XTR brackets uh, for the joints between the top and the side uh, For this one we are trying to apply for the uh, I believe it's called a threat lock uh, provided by the extrusion overland uh, Because we don't want the bolts. Uh, this these bolts are uh, Beefier than the others. They are more structural um, Related so we don't want that to back out As you see here the side column uh, supposed to have a little bit of an angle uh, aka not vertical uh, after it's uh, assembled to the top portion so I I'm just doing minor adjustments of the angle so that the bolts can go in uh, without any problems and in the process of doing that I feel I felt like the angle was not uh, great enough so I added another like layer of newspapers on the other side of the vertical or the top portion brace well now I switch to the wood panel uh, because now the angle is better for the bolts to uh, be smoothly uh, threaded in
Now after finishing one side, I'm on to the other side of the uh, rack. Um, on this side, I had a little bit of a problem because somehow uh, one of the bracket wasn't, the angle wasn't quite right. So I had some problems forcing the bolts into the uh, top bar. However, it's not, uh, it's not too bad because it's just a bracket that's you know trying to push the boat down instead of the the thread that that doesn't match which is not the case See how I met a lot of resistance uh, at the beginning phase of that boat, uh, which wasn't the case for the other side, um, which was okay. Uh, I kept going. Uh, I know it wasn't going to damage the thread because it was mainly the bracket that's, you know, uh, giving, uh, giving friction or giving resistance. In the hindsight, I, I now see that I should have um, tighten the other size bolt or, or at least get them in first um, so that um, it's gonna be easier for this side but when I was just trying to grind it in it I just had to get it in <laughs> um, but now I see that I should have done the other side of the same um, brace first I 
All right, here is the process that's not included in the extrusion overland uh, instruction manual, which is uh, when you have a soft topper, uh, you have to be creative on how to fit the rack over the soft topper. Uh, and the way I come up with was to, well, I have to remove the soft topper with the rails first because the bracket for the rack goes underneath the side rails of the soft topper. So um, here you see I'm removing the soft topper and that will also give you a good idea of how the soft topper is uh, um, installed and removed. Uh, fairly easy. Uh, the weather was not great, it was cold. So I'm just taking my time. So I'm speeding up the video. So all you need to do to remove the soft topper is to flip up the rear hatch uh, or the rear panel roll it up and then unbutton the side panels uh, like what I'm doing now uh, unvelcro the, uh, the, where the side meets the front panel and then do the same thing to the other side and then roll them up I know I didn't do a good job uh, rolling them up, but um, it was cold. I was just setting it in my garage, so I didn't really taking a lot of tr uh, trying to take a lot of time to 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 do it perfectly. Uh, so bear with me. Once the side panel is rolled up, uh, I'm here marking the location of the side rails relatively to the side rail or the top surface of my bed because I want to have the same alignment uh, when I'm putting it back on, basically. Okay, every side is uh, marked uh, in terms of locations. And now I'm unlatching the strap that holds the, uh, the top portion of the soft topper down, uh, one of each corners. And once I uh, loosen the strap on the front, I don't really need to unstrap that. Uh, all I need to do is to fold the entire thing forward, and which is pretty easy. Uh, bear in mind that when the weather is cold, it's hard to fold the panels, uh, the, the, the cloth. So it's, uh, it's, it doesn't fold all the way down, which is okay. Uh, now I'm just removing the pin where it meets the uh, side bar that now the, the top part is off of the side rail.
Last step of removing the soft topper is to remove the side rail, which is held down by four brackets. Uh, however, I did order six. Uh, I didn't put the middle one in because I anticipated of installing the rack uh, real soon when I install the soft topper. So I will have six total when I'm all done. So basically the rails will be removed um, to um, have another strip of weatherproofing uh, or waterproofing uh, material, which I use the uh, closed cell foaming uh, weather stripping underneath because the bracket of the extrusion overland rack creates like a little more gap between the rail and the bed, the top of the bed sides. Uh, we're just using that extra thickness or extra thick uh, of the weather stripping to close that gap. Now here is the part that we will definitely need a friend or extra set of at least extra set of hands um, to help you with, uh, to put the rack on the truck. The rack is relatively light, but it's no woman's job um, because it's bulky. So as you can see here. I put the brackets underneath each corner um, onto the rack first, so it gives a little bit of a problem for me to lift the, them into my truck. I, I could have done it the other way, but then with the tire carrier and everything, it just I figured this is the best way for me to do it. Um, all said and done, it wasn't too bad. May have created a little more, a little extra scratches on the side of my truck, but it's okay. Next, to put the soft topper back on, we need to put the side rails of the soft topper back onto the truck. Um, since the bracket sits underneath the rail, um, there would be a gap if you don't put any additional weather uh, stripping underneath it. So here you see I'm doing that right now. I'm adding another layer of weather stripping I got from a uh, Amazon. Uh, it's a closed foam, uh, closed cell weather stripping foam. Um, I'll provide a link of what I used down below in the descri uh, description so that you'll be able to check it out. See how I left a gap in the second layer of the weather stripping because um, that's where the bracket of the rack would go uh, under the rail. And then you can put the rails back onto the truck uh, on top of the brackets um, uh, so the bracket will fit underneath the rail. Now tighten this C-shaped um, soft topper rail bracket, the aluminum one, and then go to the other side doing the same thing. Just make sure you put the rail uh, right back to where it was before you removed it. Then the last step is to reinstall the soft topper on top of the rails um, with the pins on each side. I didn't. I wasn't able to uh, film that because when I put it up uh, back on, it was really windy, and I was by myself, and I just couldn't uh, get the camera at the time. But it last step is really easy. All you need to do is to put slide in the well, semi open the soft topper canvas, and then slide it in, and then um, pin down the uh, where the the frame of the. Uh, soft upper canvas or canvas to the side rails and I'm just showing you what my rail and the brackets look like from uh, inside of the bed and that's it um, if you have any questions on like you know details I may have missed um, please let me know I um, I'll be happy to answer all the questions you may have as um, I I know this is you know logistically this is a little bit of a hassle to um, get it done but um, it's not too bad and if you're interested i'll do another video on uh, how i mounted all the lights and the solar panel on top of the rack and how i wired it all right thank you so much for watching have a great new year and uh, see you next time